Chapter 34, Marco Despite the fact that we had kind of figured out that the dust creature wasn't actually trying to eat us, I was still slightly worried as it wrapped me up out of the ditch and carried me away. Slightly worried as in crying like a baby. I could feel that we were rising upward, but I was more concerned with just breathing, which was hard enough. The dust bees swirled around me, choking me, blinding me, imprisoning me. Suddenly, I sensed that we had stopped moving. A few moments later, the dust beast released me. I don't know what I expected to see, but it sure wasn't this. I was on something that looked like the bridge of the Starship Enterprise, only triangular. Instead of Data or Sulu or Worf or Spock, there were a bunch of taxons in a circle of hork and their weapons drawn. I also saw an open, empty box that looked like it could have been a cage. And just in front of the box was a dead hork Finally, and this was the worst part, instead of either Captain Kirk or Captain Picard, there was Visser Three. Visser Three with hork blood on his tail. Visser Three not looking happy. Not that he's probably ever looked happy, exactly. Visser Three, the dust monster hovering above us, filling the top of the room like a storm cloud. Taxons at computer screens, a circle of hork armed with dragon beams, and me, a gorilla, in the middle of all of this. It would have been funny if it had been happening to someone else. Morph out of that stupid form, Mr. Three snapped. I said nothing. We had faced Mr. Three before. We never spoke, for fear he would be able to tell that we were human and not Andalite. Someone remove that garbage, Mr. Three said, pointing at the dead hork and find that and light. Bring in bioscanners. He didn't disappear. He just morphed something very small. Andalite? He had to mean Axe, which meant Axe was still alive, and he had escaped, which explained the poor hork Mr. Three is a hard guy to work for. I felt a surge of hope. Axe was alive. Marco? I jumped. Not far, because gorillas aren't big jumpers. I just sort of jerked in surprise. Every one of the hork tightened his grip on his weapon. Marco? Is that you? It's Axe. Axe! It's me. Are you sure Visser 3 can't hear us? Just keep thoughts speak directly to me, Axe said. Where are you? I morphed to flee. Good. Maybe you can get away then. You're practically invisible. I'm in Gorilla Morph. I'm kind of noticeable. I have a plan. Oh good, I said. All our plans are working out so well. Where are you? The safest place I could think of, Axe said. I'm on Visser 3. I stared at Visser 3. Somewhere in his Andalite fur, Axe was hiding. Visser 3 glared at me. I told you to morph out of that ludicrous shape, Visser 3 said to me. Don't force me to use painful measures. Did you hear that? I asked Axe. Yes. He was thought speaking openly. Don't morph. Don't say anything. Just tell me. Do you see a computer console nearby? There will probably be a taxon working it. I see a bunch of consoles. And a bunch of taxons. And Visser 3 looking like he's ready to barbecue me. Any console will do. Do you see a small square pad that the taxon is touching? Yeah, all of the taxons are pressing one hand, if that's a hand, on these little squares. Why do you defy me, Andalite? Mr. Three demanded. To what possible purpose? Sooner or later, you have to emerge. Those are interfaces, Axe said, like your human keyboards. When you touch it, you can transmit commands directly to the computer. It is similar to thought speech, however, the basic scientific principle is actually acts. I don't need a science lecture. Mr. Three is looking at me like I'm his beef jerky. So if you have a plan, just do it. <clears throat> okay, everything will go a bit crazy in a few minutes. Just go for the console. Press your hand on it and think open hatch. Just think open hatch. What are you going to do? Axe laughed. He seldom laughs. It surprises me. <laughs> the Vleet goes after Morph Energy, so I'm going to give it some Morph Energy to go after. Visser 3 was still staring at me. 
I could practically see the wheels turning in his evil brain. Why? Why are you afraid to demorph? Why won't you speak? The other Andalites spoke. Why don't you? Then, over all our heads, the dust monster began to rotate. Faster. Faster. Visser Glush is Murdoch Vleek, a pork bajir said in their weird mix of English and their own native tongue. But Visser Three had already noticed. It would have been impossible not to. The Vleek was going totally tornado. Or a tornado with sharp teeth and slashing blades. Anything that wasn't bolted down was flying around the bridge. Suddenly, ropes of dust shot down from the twirling cloud. Ropes that wrapped Visser Three up like a package. I caught a glimpse of something on Visser Three's back. It was a bug, growing slowly larger, already an inch long. Axe. The hork all leapt forward, trying instinctively to rescue the Visser from the dust creature. Big mistake. The, force, the first hork tried to slash the whirling dust cloud with his bladed arm. In a split second, he no longer had that arm. Ah! The hork screamed. This was my chance. I barreled toward the closest computer console. A hork half fixated on the dust monster and half on me, got in the way. I hit him full force with my head down like a charging bull. The hork staggered back and splayed across a taxon. The taxon's weak legs collapsed. I didn't wait for them to get up. I punched a second taxon with my big gorilla fist. He scuttled back. I was in the clear. Water! Mr. Three cried from within the swirling dust cloud. Water! He was thirsty? At a time like this, he was thirsty? I pressed my hand on the computer console. Open hatch, I thought. Open hatch, right now. To my utter amazement, it worked. I could barely see through the tattered edges of the dust monster's storm, but the ceiling of the bridge seemed to split down the middle. It began to open. I could see stars outside. This was Axe's plan? To open the bridge up to a vacuum of space? We would all be sucked out instantly and die. I considered reversing the command. I wasn't ready to die. But then I noticed something. We were not getting sucked out into space. And then I noticed something else. A cloud above us. We were in the atmosphere. Fools! Mr. Three screamed. They're trying to escape. Get him! Get him! Get that monkey! Monkey? Monkey? I'd show them monkey. I turned. Six hork warriors advanced on me, their bladed wrists and elbows flashing. Axe? Um, I have the hatch open. And whatever you're planning on doing next, now would be a very good time. Right now. Chapter 35. Axe. I morphed out slowly. I had no intention of going all the way. My plan depended on me remaining a flea. As I began to morph, I could feel the air swirling wildly around me. It was working. My morph had drawn the Valique. It sensed the morphing energy and it was now doing what Vister 3 had programmed it to do. It was capturing the morph. Of course, in capturing me, it also captured the Visser. I heard Visser 3 yell for water. Why? What was the purpose of that? Then I heard Marco say, Um, Axe? I have the hatch open, and whatever you're planning on doing next, now would be a very good time. Right now. I reversed morph. Back to total flea morph. The hairs on Visser Three's back, which had shrunk to the size of tall trees, now rose up around me, taller than the tallest building. I felt my flea armor plate clank back into place, and I was once again not much bigger than a comma on this page. It was time to move. I released the massive spring of power in my hind legs and fired myself away from the Visser's body. I hit a wall of wind. I was caught in a swirling mass of dust. The particles were roughly my own size. They shot past me at incredible speed. Slam! A particle hit me. It stuck to me. It was impaled on my own flea combs, the spikes that protected the joints in my armor. It was stuck to me. And only then, locked together with it, was I able to see it through with my weak flea eyes. It was alive! It was a creature my own size, 
but with a hundred minuscule wings that beat in the air. It had antenna, but different than any seen on Earth. These antenna were covered in tiny, upturned bowls, like the dishes of primitive human radio telescopes. Those were the structures it used to sense energy sources. There were no eyes and no mouth, but two long filaments, like strands of wire, swept back from the front of the creature. This must be how it fed, by channeling energy down the wires. The Velik was not one creature. It was billions. It was a swarm of billions of tiny creatures. They had evolved into a swarm that could come together and become a destructive entity of gnashing teeth and slicing blades. But in reality, they were separate, insect-like creatures that fed on energy. I motored my tiny front legs and shoved the Velik away. Its wings beat, and in a flash, it was gone. Suddenly, a huge silvery globule the size of a human house came shooting past. It hit several of the dust creatures and knocked them away. Then more. More. A spinning globule hit me. It wrapped itself around me. I was trapped. Trapped. Falling. Falling. A strange substance pressed all around me, enclosing me, smothering me. Water! The Yurks had turned on a water hose. That's what Mr. Three had been calling for. Water. The drop of water that enclosed me spatted against the floor. I could not get away. It clung to me. It was like glue to my flea body. And then I was out. I was on dry ground. The water droplets loaded with powerless dust monsters were showering all around me like meteor storm. Marco, stamp your feet. I need to find you. I'm a little busy, Marco cried. I got hork here looking for trouble, and someone turned on the sprinklers. Stamp your feet! I felt a new vibration rumble through the floor. I knew where it was coming from. I leaped. I tumbled through the air. I landed on a forest of gigantic hairs, each as thick as the biggest tree. Where are you? Marco yelled. On you, I said. We have to get out of here. How? Jump through the open hatch. I'm a gorilla, not a... Wait, wait, I have an idea. I felt a shuddering vibration like an earthquake that rolled through Marco's gorilla body. Then movement. Then wind whipping past at incredible speed. Where are we now? I asked. The good news is, we're out of the ship. I used a couple of fork as a ladder to climb up over them. That's the good news. You seem to be implying that there might be some bad news, too, I said. Oh, yeah, Marco said. The bad news is we're about two miles up in the air, and we are plummeting to Earth. Chapter 36, Rachel. The truck hit my right back leg. It must have shattered the bone because the pain was incredible. The impact knocked me several feet. I fell, and my head slammed the concrete. Maybe that's what did it. I lay there on my side, breathing with difficulty. My eyes were closed. Flash. A construction site. Late at night. The light in the sky was gone. Now it was in front of me, resting on the ground. A spaceship. It had landed. There was a voice in my head. It came from nowhere. No, it came from him. The alien. I could see him, lying there, injured. The Yerks. The Yerks he said. They have come to destroy you. Flash. A barn full of animals in cages. Birds, foxes, squirrels, raccoons, bats. And Cassie was there. Yes, Cassie, my friend. And the others. I could see them now. They had been with me at the construction site, and ever since that night we had been joined together. Animorphs. That was the word. It was Marco's word. Flash. I was flying. I was flying on wings that seemed to stretch forever, soaring high on the thermals. An eagle, that's what I was. A bald eagle. And then, yes, they had swarmed me. A bunch of smaller blackbirds. They had swarmed me, and I hit a tree, and then... Rachel, it took Marco. I opened my elephant eyes. A squirrel stood nervous and jumpy, tail twitching, mouth working almost as if it were talking. Cassie, I said. 
It took Marco, Cassie said again. It took Marco, and I didn't do anything. Marco. I remember Marco. You do? Is your memory coming back? Yeah, mostly. It still feels shaky. Over our heads swooped two bug fighters. Bug fighters. The words were right there in my brain. I knew what they were. Bug fighters. Crew, one hork one taxon. I could form mental pictures of the hork The taxons were still hazy. But both were yurks. That was the important thing. Each had a yurk in its head. I can't stand up, I told Cassie. The elephant's leg is broken. I'm morphing back to human. Me too. It's gone for now. The leak is gone, Cassie said. Rachel, I should have morphed while the dust beast was here. I could have drawn it away from Marco. I was scared. Of course you were scared. So was I, I said. I could feel myself shrinking. My legs, as big as telephone poles, were becoming normal human legs. The tusks sucked back into my mouth and split to form front teeth. The trunk grew weak, lost its muscle, and shriveled back to form my nose and mouth. Why did the dust beast attack us? I wondered, as soon as my mouth could form speech. It's off, carrying Marco away. Maybe killing him, Cassie wailed. I should have... Look, Cassie, I said sharply. That's what happened, all right? It's in the past. We have to present the present to worry about. I pointed at the two bug fighters that had looped around overhead and were coming back towards us at a much slower speed. Cassie, I don't remember, I said. Can we morph again so quickly? Yes, yes we can. It's exhausting, though. But we don't have a choice. We can't let them catch us in human morph. It would blow our cover forever. Cassie, we need morphs that can move fast, and I don't remember anything we have available, I said urgently. Cassie concentrated. It's night. The woods. Let's go airborne. We both acquired owl morphs. We used them to guard Jake when he was taken by the Yurk. Great horned owls. I squeezed my eyes shut. An owl? I had morphed an owl? Yes. Yes, I remembered. I could feel it. The bug fighters took up positions, hovering the air just a hundred yards on either side of us. In the distance, I heard sirens screaming in the night, police cars growing closer. Probably controllers, not real policemen. I focused all my thoughts on making the change. I squeezed my eyes shut and concentrated. When I opened my eyes again, it was broad daylight. No, not daylight. I was seeing the world through the eyes of an owl. It might as well have been noon. I could see everything. I could see every detail of the bug fighters. I could see deep into the black woods. I could see the flashing blue lights of the police cars as if they were right in front of my face. Ready? Cassie asked. Yeah, I think so. Follow me, Cassie said. She flapped her wings. I flapped mine. We flew just a foot off the ground. Suddenly, a large creature dropped from the hovering bug fighter. It dropped more than 50 feet, hit the ground, rolled, and was up. My owl vision saw him as if he were bathed in a spotlight. hork I yelled. Straight ahead. A second later, another hork dropped from above. With amazing speed, they were up and running for us. Their arm blades glinted in the moonlight. We were flying straight at them. Too low. Too low and not enough time to get off the ground. If we turned, we would lose altitude. They would get us before we could get clear. Straight at them, I said. My girl, Rachel, Cassie said grimly. Then, go for the eyes. I flapped my wings with desperate energy. I raked my talons forward. The hork came straight at us, and we went straight for them. I knew right then that my fate was not in my own hands anymore. If their orders were to kill us, we would die. I can measure the distance. I knew my own speed. And I could see the superhuman speed of the hork with their flashing bladed arms. Roar! Something big flew through the air. I saw a flash of orange and black. My hork went down hard with a huge tiger on his back, slamming him down into the dirt. The hork in front of Cassie turned to see for just a split second. Cassie blew past him. The tiger leaped back off the downed hork I sailed above them all, flapping for dear life. 
Let's get out of here, Jake said. Definitely, I agreed. What about Marco? Jake asked. Have you seen Marco? 